Good morning and welcome to Inside Oakwood with Dr. Leslie Pollard. And we have a wonderful show for you today. Good morning, Dr. Pollard. How are you doing? Oh, good morning. Good morning. I am doing really, really well. It's a beautiful Thursday to be alive. A great yes. Thursday to be alive. Triumphant Thursday. Don't forget that, Dr. Pollard. Yes, I know. I know. I know. And it's a great we day are, to be triumphant as well. Yeah, and we are winning today. So you got a word about winning. And oh, yes, yes, yes. All the time all the time. I heard a friend of mine share this and I want to share it today. It's about it's about living life as service, right? So some you know there are lots of models for how to live life. One model is acquisition. You live to acquire all you can get. And the Bible talks about a man like that who um who in the book of Luke actually said I'm I'm going to build bigger barns and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then the Lord says to him, "You fool, this night your soul will be required of you." So the life that says my goal is acquisition is unsatisfactory and it's not going to be sustained. Mm -hmm. the, the, another way to live life is for pleasure, right? Some people live life for pleasure. You call these people hedonists. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose of life is to derive pleasure, just to find pleasure, pleasure. You know, eat, drink, be merry because tomorrow we die. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. The Christian view of life is the one that Jesus advanced, that if you want to gain your life, you lose it by serving others. And so one of the things that I, I read, uh, I heard a friend of mine say recently, was, was from, from the great Stephen Covey, right? The great Stephen Covey. He said that human beings have four needs, to live, okay. to learn, to love, and to leave a legacy. Mm. That makes sense? Yes. Makes sense, doesn't it? Every human being has those four basic needs, to live, that's the fight for survival. That's why somebody pinch your nose, you want to breathe. Because we want to live, right? We want to live. Right, right. To learn, the mind must be stimulated and informed. To love, mm -hmm. to be connected to other people. And then to leave a legacy, to not just live for ourselves, but to leave something that others can build upon. Mm -hmm. mm. Today, when we think about the way we're going to live our lives here on Inside Oakwood, for 125 years, Oakwood University has said, we've got to live, to love and learn and also leave a legacy. And that legacy is a legacy of service. So our motto here at Oakwood is, enter to learn, depart to serve. Yes. And that's what we're all about, right? So that's yes. what we're all about. And so when we talk about what's going to be happening today in our broadcast, this family is committed to using everything that God has given them mm -hmm. for the purpose of service. Because that's the only life that's fulfilling. Even Dr. King said, Dr. King said that the full life is the life where you serve others. So mm. that's what we're about at Oakwood. We've been doing it 125 years. We're gonna keep doing it and keep turning out students who enter to learn right. and to serve. Wow. And that's that's a really great segue because, you know, we are we are so blessed. Oakwood University is so blessed to have our guest with us today, who is probably an example of all of those things, living, loving and going to leave a legacy, already starting that legacy. Right. Dr. That's Pollard, right. tell us who our guests are today. I've been talking about yeah, them all morning. We've got some wonderful guests today. Of course, we've got I want to make sure I get the pronunciations right, you know, because I worked on that a lot. Yeah, got, Elena. Of course, of course, Elena. Yeah, we've got we've got so so mommy, of course we start with mommy, right? Okay, this, okay. This, this <laughs> Daphne McPorter. Daphne, welcome this morning. Welcome. Thank you. And then of course we've got Miss, 12 year old, 12 years old. Elena Anale. Anale. Anna. Elena. Elena Anale. Anale. Yes, yes. We want to welcome you this morning to Inside Oakwood. And this is a wonderful team. I, that, that's the way I see them. This is a team. And they are here today to talk about, of course, their choice to come to Oakwood. But you may be asking yourself, why a 12-year-old? Yeah. And that's just an amazing story featured on MSNBC recently. Yes. And I just came by this morning. Boy, don't I sound like your pastor? I came by this morning. <laughs> I just came by this morning to welcome, of course, Elena to Oakwood University and her mother to, yes. to welcome them to this wonderful community where we nurture and serve and, and try to help young people take off wow. in, their, in their life commitments and their life of service. So we're very grateful for that. Uh, Daphne, welcome this morning. Welcome all the way from Thank Texas. Thank you. Yes. 
Thank yeah. You. What well, part of Texas is that? Are you all from? We're right outside of Dallas Fort Worth area. Wow. I noticed I say y'all because we say that here too. Yes. <laughs> yes, you gotta say the y'all. You say it with a twang. That's right, y'all. <laughs> and, and Daphne and her daughter lived in Loma Linda. I mean, I learned so much about them in our conversation the other day. But mm -hmm. we don't want to take up all the time talking. We want to listen to them. And I'm told that Elena has a uh, has something that she begins every every interview every interview with and um so elena okay so i Tell said i start my affirmation and then you repeat it okay oh, okay, okay i say um i'm anointed i'm, I'm anointed. anointed i'm appointed i'm, I'm appointed. appointed and i use my gifts for god and I, I use, use my gifts for God. God. Amen. That's Amen. just wonderful. Wonderful. She has so many gifts at such an early, early age, Dr. Pollard. So we're, we are so excited that she's going to be joining Oakwood University. And has she already started? What's going on? Has she already well, what, started? What here I, I guess we need, I guess we need to set it up by simply saying, Daphne, tell us about your daughter and you know, uh, can I use the word? I'm, I'm, I'm shy. I don't want to embarrass Elena, but, <laughs> but, but, but to be considered in the media as, as a genius, a girl genius, finished high school at 12 years old and getting ready for college, and um, wow, Daphne, tell us, tell us when you first realized that there was something special about Elena. I, there must have been a moment when you said, "This child is gifted." Um. Well. She was four and she's always had this love for Legos. Mm. And I would just, you know, watch her play with her Legos. Most kids, you know, Legos are everywhere and they just throw them all over the place. Right, right, right. Was not her case. She would organize her Legos by color, by sizes. And it was, she was very just meticulous about it at four and go into a whole space if you move one of them out of place. Mm -hmm. And I would just watch her as she would play with her Legos. And I would just sit there and be like, okay, um, okay. And I just, I just continued to watch her play with her Legos. And that's how I really learned that she was gifted and she had this gift and I would just start buying her more Legos. And she, I never found Legos all over the house. Really? They were always put together or they were always color coded and <laughs> by size and you would see the, the bunch of colors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So at that point, I think is when I knew that there was something, something there. And um, I started taking her to uh, astronomy nights at four, four or five mm -hmm. years old. I started taking her to astronomy nights. And I think her first astronomy night was the Temecula astronomy night um, in Temecula, California. Mm -hmm. And she was just, just blown away just by the stars and space and at that point is when we kind of just started this journey of going to astronomy nights, visiting NASA centers. Mm -hmm. I would buy her Legos. And as she got older, you know, I'd get larger Legos. And so I just knew that I knew that there was a gifting there and I nurtured that that gift in her. Um, and she would always tell me the first science center I took her to the NASA center, she would say, you know, mommy, I'm going to work here one day. Oh, wow. I'm going to work here. And every time we go into a NASA center, she would say, this is my job. I'm going to work here. And initially she said she wanted to be an astronomer. But now that's changed to she wants to be an engineer in mm -hmm. robotics. But that's that's kind of how the whole journey started. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> you, of course, we of course, you've told the story before. But for us, we're just we, right. we're amazed and, and inspired by, by your story. So, Elena, um, you're interested in NASA and engineering. And of course, here in Huntsville, we have a huge NASA, NASA Space Flight Center. Um, and some of us have relatives in others. My daughter works out at NASA. Um, so tell us, about your, tell us about your interest in astronomy and your interest in engineering and, and, and how you believe it can help you make a difference. And then let's hear about the organization you founded mm -hmm. called Brown STEM Girls, which is so exciting. Elena? What I really love about astronomy and engineering is with engineering, you can be creative and look at different things to piece something together that 
you never thought you could make mm -hmm. until I saw that there's like a bunch of jobs that can actually benefit to that what I want to do and build rovers and robots mm -hmm. and when I saw NASA was sending them to places to find like life on different planets so I was like that's pretty amazing that's cool wow so I started looking into the engineering programs and all the stuff that comes with engineering and I saw that it wasn't really populated around women and girls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Great. as I started looking more into the population around engineering and science and STEM I said well why aren't there any little girls or mm -hmm. women of color like just inside of STEM jobs and I said, mom, I want to make an organization to help brown girls in STEM have opportunities of STEM jobs mm -hmm. and opportunities to get into jobs that most people say they can't have. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. So you've wow. done more than most people do at age 50 something. <laughs> 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 really? I mean, you, you've already finished high school and, and starting college and you've started this foundation. How do you even find the time to do this at 12 years old? And I know you got your mom there with you, but <laughs> you know, I know that, that you probably led a lot of this, right? And, and as far as getting it done and having the ideas and implementing them. I pretty much, um, very like determined when it comes to STEM so I say like say she my mom asked me if I wanted to go for asking I'm like okay I have assignments to do I have to literally finish this Lego <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like I'd rather do this than go actually spend my time mm -hmm. doing what you see normal 12 year olds doing wow. mm -hmm. going to going shopping or just hanging out <laughs> with the family I've been over there building Legos. <laughs> wow. So, wow. So mom really <laughs> keeps you on track then as well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Daphne, how, how do you, as, now so put on your parenting hat. So God gives, God picks you for some reason to, to give this gifted child and these gifted children too. That, so God picks you, he selects you for that. So how do you now, because it's clear to me, Elena is every bit the 12-year-old, yeah. right? She's very gifted, but she's every bit the 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. how, how do you manage people's expectations of a child who's so intellectually gifted, and yet she's 12 years old? Well, the one thing that I consistently put into her is that you don't have to meet anyone's expectations mm -hmm. except your own. You, she's very, very, very organized. Mm -hmm. um, but I continuously instill in her is that the only expectations you have to meet are your own. Mm -hmm. You set your goals, you mm -hmm. meet your goals, mm -hmm. and that's it. You know, the world sees you as this, as they now have dubbed her America's kid and mm -hmm. this child prodigy, Jesus. you know. And so the one thing that I keep putting in her is that. You don't have to meet anyone's expectations, but your own. I keep her focused. You know, of course, being a 12 year old, she wasn't even allowed on social media until recently. Mm -hmm. And she's still not allowed on social media. Um, I let her manage her pages, mm -hmm. um, but she's still 12. So okay. I have a God given duty to protect mm -hmm. her and to cover her as a mom mm -hmm. and protect the mm -hmm. gift that God has put inside of her. Mm -hmm. So she's still 12. She still does 12 year old things. You know, I know when to shut it down and say, yeah, not today. We're not doing this today. Or we're not taking this interview today, or you need to close the books for a few minutes and do X, Y, and Z or pull her out the house. She's involved in, you know, activities with other kids, her age, mm -hmm. you know, she loves track and field and yeah. she, she loves cheerleading you know, so I still keep her around kids her age, despite that she's still in college, mm -hmm. you know, and she knows how to communicate with her peers. And 
so that's 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 where we are. <laughs> wow. So we, we do want to congratulate her for gra- for graduating from high school. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, at, at 12 years old. How did, how did that feel, Elena? You know, did you feel like you were like the odd person uh, accomplishing so much at this age and, and graduating with kids that are 17 and 18 and possibly 19 years old? Okay, so at first, when I walked up on the stage, I'm like, I'm literally standing in front of like 20 people, (laughs) half of them I know, and the rest are like people who are way older than me who are graduating with actual like degrees, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm 12, I'm the only 12-year-old here. (laughs) (laughs) everybody's just staring at you waiting for you to start talking you're like wow i'm on the stage (laughs) (laughs) and you gave the speech and normally yes you gave the speech wow tell us what you told your class well my speech was mostly about the power of thank you and what thank you can do so I, I did like say a lot of thank yous. Wow. <laughs> Just from thanking like the homeschool coalition and my mentors, my mom, and all the people who have made this happen for me. Mm-hmm. So I will say I was kind of nervous, but <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> I, was, I was very excited. Wow. Well, you know, I think everybody that makes any kind of speeches, I, I'm sure Dr. Pollard at a graduation <laughs> is nervous, <laughs> you know, with all the people. Um, so that's not unusual. It's just that you are 12 years old and you've accomplished this uh, at such a young age. And uh, to see you, to talk, to see you and hear you talk about what thank you it means to you. Do you have a special experience I know you got a lot of people to thank so that's not where I'm going but I'm like what was it that that experience that helped you realize that thank you was a big deal in saying it okay did you I I don't know if you already told them this but um Mr. oh Mr. Clayton Turner yeah that was came (laughs) and he gave me my diploma on the stage. And Clayton Turner um, is the director of NASA's Langley Research Center. Wow. So that was. I was pretty excited. I didn't even know he was going to make it. So when he came, I was like, eh, why are you? Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. It was the real moment. Daphne, <laughs> no, Daphne, I, Daphne, she is every bit the 12 year old. I, mm-hmm. I could just. You have done a wonderful job. You, Thank you. you. Really She's every bit the 12 year old. That's beautiful. Wow. So as you get ready to continue t- on your, your path, your academic path, what are some of your plans and wh- what's coming up for you in the near term for the summer, for the fall and things like that? What are you going to be involving yourself in, Alana? Elena? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a few things that are going on in the future is, um, can I say that? I'm no. sorry. No, I can't say it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm going to say that I do hope in the future to become an NASA engineer mm-hmm. and that I am getting an honor in Phoenix oh. uh, around like next week. It's the June the 3rd. She's being honored by the WNBA in Phoenix, oh, wow. Arizona. Yeah. So that's pretty wow. cool. Wow. And wow. she'll be starting Oakwood University. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oakwood <laughs> University. That's right. Well, yes. This is, this is the place for STEM. You know, uh, we is. have a wonderful Dr. Elaine Vanderpool here. And I know she's excited about that. And she just says that you're an amazing young woman and congratulates you on the success so far. Uh, so we know you have a lot going on. You're going to be very, very busy. Um, and your mom's there is going to keep you uh, focused on everything. This just It's just so amazing to me, Dr. Pollard. So how's Oakwood feeling about all this? I know well, Oakwood we're, is We're feeling- excited. I mean, we're excited. And we want to be, you know, as I said to Daphne, we had a personal conversation 
two days ago, I guess two days ago. Yes. Um, we had a person to come. We want, this is Daphne's treasure and we want to be faithful in our stewardship. When someone commits their treasure to you, as we do with all of our students, we, we, we want to, I often say to parents, thank you for entrusting us with your treasure. The hopes, the dreams, the aspirations, not only of the immediate family, but generations of family members are tied up in this child and we want to do justice to that. And we're gonna look out for her and care for her and nurture her already. Some of the STEM people are, are chiming in the chat room, how they're excited and looking forward to being supportive. So it's gonna be wonderful. It's just gonna be a wonderful experience and Oakwood feels really good about it. We think it made a great choice. I think, I think our STEM successes are wonderful, but even beyond our STEM successes, this is a family of faith. I, I talked to Daphne two minutes and I could see right away, right away. It's interesting when I told her that I worked at Loma Linda for a part of my life. They lived at Loma Linda for, I don't know how long you told me, Daphne. Mm -hmm. Was it a year or two or so you lived mm -hmm. in Loma Linda? Yeah, um, about three or four years. Oh my, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So she has some familiarity with the orientation and, and the faith-centeredness and the God-firstness of our institutions. And, and you combine that with the HBCU experience and that student becomes unstoppable mm -hmm. with God-centered life. And then what an HBCU pours into a student for, for 40 years, uh, they, they're just unstoppable. The sky is the limit. You can go yeah. as far and as fast as you want to go. Wow. So you're listening to 90.1 FM WJOU licensed to Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. So Elena, can we get back to you and talk about uh, some of the ideas that you have in engineering? Do, you know, you probably have an idea about something that hasn't been created yet. <laughs> It kind of hasn't been created yet because um, I'm going to create a new version of it sooner or later. <laughs> but I do, in my future, want to be able to build a NASA rover that will be sent into space to help Curiosity rover and the Perseverance find life on Mars and the new coming planet Europa, that is Jupiter's moon. Wow. So... I am very excited. <laughs> so you want to go further? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Star Trek now. Further, go where no man has gone before, and and sending man with with this rover, maybe. I have done research and sending like humans. It does have a difference from sending robots. With humans, you have the risk of knowing, are they coming back? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if they don't, something malfunctions and they end up getting stuck there? Or what if they don't find anything? We can't bring them back. So there's a bunch of different scenarios. Malfunctions mm -hmm. are things that could happen and you wouldn't know. So I think robots and rovers are are better because if it fails at least you know it's at least like part it's human it is not an actual human yeah. that can die on a planet <laughs> so we, we've seen those movies right <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, who knows, Donna, um, you know, the NASA, I, I met with the director of NASA a few months ago, we were doing some work over there at Oakwood University, and she told me about Project Artemis, which is the plan to get the first female on the moon, right? We talked about the first man on the moon. Who knows, maybe that could be Elena, who knows, right? <laughs> right? Maybe that could be Elena. Exactly. Uh, Project Artemis, it's designed to get the first woman to walk on the moon, so... So there are lots of opportunities here, lots of opportunities. And, and and I, 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 go ahead, I'm sorry, please. No, I was just going to ask, since you, you know, since you made that, uh, you specified that I wanted to ask her personally, does she, does she actually prefer working on, on Earth or do you, do you really look forward to going out in space? You know, because some engineers, <laughs> they're into it, but they don't, they're not like, I want to go to the moon or so. <laughs> how, how do you feel on that? <laughs> What do you prefer? How do I feel or how does she feel? No, no, Elena, Elena. <laughs> Elena. I think 
the earth is a pretty good solid ground. <laughs> <laughs> the earth is a pretty good place. I'm well, with her. <laughs> you know, now there, there are lots of, before we, before we wrap up, uh, Donna, there are lots of wonderful tributes that are coming into the chat room. I just want to share a few of them from our listeners and from our viewers, right? Uh, yeah. Angela King, a dear friend of ours, congratulations to a great role model mother. Look at that, Daphne, that's, that's for you. Thank you. Your, your guidance is a blessing to many other mothers. Your daughter is truly blessed with the gift mentioned in James 117. And mom, you represent the Proverbs 31 woman. Thank your you. family will remain in my prayers. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, another, another comment that um, Elena is the youngest person ever accepted. This was not in the chat room, but the youngest person ever accepted to Oakwood University. So you set, a, you set another record. Wow. You set another record already. A very wow. impressive young lady from Pamela Hatchett McElroy in Chicago. Mm -hmm. This is totally phenomenal. God bless her. From, from, from the chair of our Biomedical Biological Sciences program, Dr. Elaine Vanderpool. She is an amazing young woman. Congratulations on all the successes so far. Uh, and, and they just keep keep coming in and we're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Melvin Harris says congratulations on choosing Oakwood University. He's yeah. uh, our security. What, our police what chief. Police He's chief. The chief of our police department. So yeah. thank, you, thank you, Chief Harris. Congratulations. <laughs> He's going to be looking out for you when you. <laughs> well, I was going to say when you get here. <laughs> the chair of our computer science and engineering program, uh, yeah. Lisa James. We are looking forward to Elena matriculating at OU. So. Mm -hmm. already you're touching people so thank you so much thank you wow. so tell us a little bit more about your foundation um the brown stem girl mm -hmm. foundation uh and because i think this is a great opportunity because i know there's you know a lot of listeners out there now young your age and probably listening now and they want to know about this foundation uh we know that you want to target brown skin girls and and minorities uh and to attract them into STEM, but what does the foundation provide? Are there conferences and things like that and trainings? Can you talk about that a little bit for us, Elena? Okay, so I'm gonna say peace and then I'm gonna give the rest to my mom because she's okay. the person who runs that part. Um, Brown STEM Girl is like an organization who gives opportunities of mentorship to girls. And we are starting a group, or would you say like a small foundation mm -hmm. to give mentorship and scholarships and <laughs> a lot of the stuff that you probably wanted, right? When you <laughs> a lot of opportunities. Yeah. So um it's like she said, it'll be a lot of opportunities for girl of girls of color in STEM. Yeah. Um, so the Brown Stem Girl Foundation is created to be a very prestigious foundation and very competitive. Mm -hmm. And it will be it will provide scholarships for girls of color in STEM. You have to have a 3.5 GPA. You have to go through a vetting process, an interview process. Um, and there will be a pinning ceremony, a jacket ceremony um, for those those students who are a part of the foundation. Mm -hmm. And when we say girls of color, it's we have a whole Hispanic community that is ran by someone, mm -hmm. uh, Indian community. It's girls of color that don't get mm -hmm. the opportunities mm -hmm. that others will primarily get. Mm -hmm. um, Elena has gotten so far, I don't know, probably 20 or so proclamations declaring April 30th Brown STEM Girl STEM in the City Day. Yeah. So clap that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that day is dedicated to bringing resources in the community for girls of color in STEM and honoring women of color in STEM. Mm -hmm. So next year, April 30th, will be Brown STEM Girl STEM in the City Day, Brown STEM Girl STEM in the City Day Disney. Mm. And at that time, there will be a conference open to the general public for girls of that, you know, are considering pursuing mm -hmm. something in STEM. And then for those that are, that meet those requirements that would like to attend the conference and they're already in the STEM field. Mm -hmm. And then there will also be um, their penny ceremony and the jacket ceremony for the scholars that are selected through the scholarship foundation. Yeah. Um, applications open Jan July 1st and will close September 1st and will be vetted by an entire board. So if anybody wants to give, you can go to the website and give. 
you have girls that want to apply, you can go to the website and apply. Um, and right now we're seeking to develop, which, you know, we've talked to Dr. Pollard about um, a whole just portion of the foundation mm -hmm. where we create partnerships with other colleges and HBCUs that will partner with them to work with them in getting admissions to HBCUs wow. and pursue careers in the STEM field. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we do have a question about that. How young uh, do your participants need to be to participate? Ages 10 through 17. 10 through 17, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. and that is for the mentorship program. For the scholarship program, the scholarship program is open to high school seniors. Mm -hmm. um, uh oh, they froze up there, Dr. Pollard. Ah, oh see. my goodness. Maybe, maybe, it'll, you know, maybe it'll come back on. Hopefully they'll pop back in. But that, that's a great foundation, the Brown STEM Girl Foundation uh, that uh, Elena and her mother have set up. So Dr. Pollard, you know, I know uh, Oakwood is feeling like a winner today on this triumphant Thursday. Oh, about yes, this whole yes, situation. yes. Of course we, we are. And, and, and we generally do. Um, it, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And I'd like to thank, of course, too, our enrollment team, uh, Mr. Lewis Jones. Many of you know him. He's our director yeah. for enrollment. Mm -hmm. he, he just moved right in to make sure that the family was comfortable and that they had adequate information. Mm -hmm. And we were very great. Oh, back, back, back. He yes. was. So, so, he, so Mr. Jones Mr. Jones was a wonderful liaison. And I just want to acknowledge his work. Uh, I don't know any person who has more passion for Oakwood than I'm Mr. telling Jones, you. our director for enrollment. He loves this place because he knows it's it's power. He experienced it. It's transformational power. So, it, so Daphne, would you please finish telling us about the, you, you froze up right at a certain point. You were telling us about the foundation mm -hmm. and you had just said that, that we're going to work together with Oakwood, of course, to access the HBCU community for Brown STEM yes. girls. Okay. So we just wanted you to finish because you froze up at one point and then we lost you. Okay. So right now, um, not releasing too much information because of course we'll, we'll be working very closely with Oakwood and Dr. Pollard and um, the staff there to create a funnel or a channel for girls that want to attend HBCUs and providing admission and scholarships into these HBCUs. And again, you have to meet certain requirements. Mm -hmm. So Elena's really established this foundation as a competitive, prestigious yeah. African-American foundation for mm -hmm girls of color that they don't have out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you have to go into whatever college you're going to into the STEM field and you have to commit to that. So mm -hmm. there are things and responsibilities and accountability and, you know, it's not just being thrown into something. There is a whole mm -hmm. accountability process to make sure that you stay on your path and that we support you and that whatever school you go to support you wow within your career of STEM. Wow, so in this foundation, it sounds like now the foundation is the mama that you have been to, Elena, <laughs> taking <laughs> care of those participants. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's what we wanna create in other girls because part of that is throughout their college tenure, they're responsible for going back and mentoring the girls, the seniors in the foundation. So mm -hmm. the whole jest here is giving back. You know, mm -hmm. something was given to, to us, my daughter, She's giving that to them. And so now you get a chance to give that back okay. to other girls. You know, okay. you don't just get to sit on your gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're getting ready to close now. Could you tell us the website, uh, Daphne, and where people can go to get more information about the foundation and program? Absolutely. Um, the website is thebrownstemgirl.com. And then when the website for the scholarship launches, it will be on the website and it will be the Brown Stem Girl Foundation, excuse me, the Brown Stem Girl Scholarship Dot com and you can also find it on all of Elena's social media the brown stem girl all right thank, thank you. you thank you so much Dr. Pollard well we, we welcome you we, we, we welcome you to Oakwood and we look forward to working together to grow this area as a matter of fact most recently in March our our faculty our stem faculty and our office of research and grants put on a major conference on women in stem and it was exceptionally well okay. done and well received. So we'll continue that trajectory. And now we've got girls in STEM. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. I can see it growing. I can see it growing. So thank yeah. you so very much and God bless you. you. And we look forward to welcoming you and seeing you. So we're yeah. so excited. <laughs>
And I can't wait to get my T-shirt. Thank <laughs> <laughs> but thank I you, guys. Get, I want to get some of those, too. I've got two granddaughters. One is seven, one is five. We want to make sure they they, they support the T-shirt. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. We are looking forward to having you uh, join Oak, the Oakwood University family. And thank you, Dr. Pollard, for being with us and bringing such a great program today for Inside Oakwood. We'll see you again next week on Thursday for another edition.